Welcome back to the procedural generation mini series. In the last video, I showed how we could generate a labyrinth like this. And since the last video, all I've done is I've come in here and I've labeled some things. So I've just labeled things appropriately so that I can keep track of what's doing what. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing how we can emit a final room or a boss room or, you know, the end goal so that we can move on to a next level. This is going to be very simple to do. And I've grouped this whole thing and I've edited it or uh, placed it into its own um, creation so that I can go into here into the source and edit things appropriately. So I'm going to do that now. And so you may have noticed I set up a little chip here that's going into the uh, target value. And what I've done here is I have a default size, so at 10. And I'm also, I also have a variable modifier here, which is getting a variable called map size. And these are both placed into an OR gate. So what this is doing is it'll take the highest value of either one and pass that in. So if we don't have a variable called map size, it'll at least do something. So the default size is 10. And of course, if I get out a variable and I have a variable in this uh, scene called map size, I can set the map size to something, uh, say 50. And so now what it'll do is it'll take 50. So I just did, I set this up so that by default, it at least will do something if uh, this way I don't have to keep creating a variable every time I want to go into this other creation here. So what we're going to want to do is we have our regular room here, or tile, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to create a copy, and I'm just going to change the color so that we know that this is something different. So I'll have this emit that thing. And I'll copy this and have this thing emit the final room. And I'll change the name of this. For now, I'll just call it emit final room. And so obviously, we're going to want to emit this final room when the selector is on the B port and when we're done counting up. So once this is full. Now, in order to keep things more organized, I'm going to create a new microchip. And I'm going to call this emit room. This is going to hold our various rooms and take input for the power and output just like the emitters currently do. So I'll get out some nodes. I'll have one input node for the B selector. This will be the signal to emit. And I'll have another one for the type of room. So this will be based off our counter full for this example. I'll have an output node which will be the object was emitted and for now I'll just put another output node to signal that the final room has been emitted. So I've labeled these here. This is emit, this is room type, this is has been emitted, and this is end generation. So the has been emitted is going to go to the same place that this goes to. So it's going to go to the A port of the selector. It's also going to increase the counter. So I'll plug those in. This end generation is going to go both into the end generation signal uh, receiver and the destroyer. B from the selector is going to go into here. And I'm going to take the counter full and plug that into here. And we'll use that as the room type. Since we currently only have two rooms, it's either going to be a 0 or a 1. So in order to differentiate between the room types, I'm going to get a selector out, and I'm going to plug this room type into the active port. So when this is not full, it will be on port A, and when this is full, the selector will go to port B. Since this selector is going to be what's powering our emitters, I'm going to take this emit pulse and plug it into the power of the selector. So if I pin this to the screen, we can see this will turn on and off. And that's what we'll use to turn on and off our emitters. I'm going to unplug the emitter here and bring that in. And so now A will wire into the power of this emitter. And the object just emitted will go into there. 
we'll take our new emitter, bring this in, B will power this, and the output of this will go into this wire. If I had other logic associated with these emitters, I may want to put these in their own chips, but for now this will do. And there's a lot of wires here, so I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup just to make things easier for us to look at. And since both of these are using the same thing, I'm also going to put these into their own microchip. And so I've labeled this end generation, and all I've done is put a node and place these into the place the wire from the node into the uh, receiver and the destroyer. And now we can just plug this end generation port into there like that. And I'll label this like that. And so now I think this should be it. Let's go ahead and see how it looks. I'm going to back up a little bit here. And um, I'll start time. Oh, I see. Since we're now using extra one extra piece of logic here to decide which selector is on, one frame is now too short for this to um, correctly turn this trigger zone on and off. And so instead of 0 0.033, which is one frame, I can just change this to something a little bit bigger, like 0 0.039, and now everything should work. So there we have it. This would be considered like the end goal, the end room, whatever you want to call it. And so now that we have that set up, all we have to do is edit our last room here so that when the player reaches it, we can put a transition to a new scene or a, uh, a doorway into the, the next level. So we can do this together. I'm going to attach this microchip and it's okay if it's surface snap, that's fine. And so we're going to need a doorway and this will be a exit. And in order to trigger the doorway, we'll use a trigger zone. I'll set the size of this trigger zone to roughly match the size of the room here. And for now, I'll just have it detect the possessed controller sensor. So if I put a puppet in, that should work. And so here I am in test mode. And if I um, take control of this puppet, if I possess him, that should turn the trigger zone on. You can see it there. And when I'm not possessed, it's off. All we have to do now is plug the detected into the doorway, and that should be good there. So we can see I've stamped a blank puppet down. And we'll run around and try and find that room. There it is over here. And when we step on it, we trigger a doorway. Now, of course, maybe we'd want the player to interact with something like a door or a staircase or whatever it is, an object. We can take a wireless transmitter and we'll put it into the controller logic, which is inside the puppet logic. And we can wire up something to trigger that. So let's say we use the touchpad and we can name this go to next level and so now within our final room here we can just add an extra bit of logic to detect that it's in the zone and they press the button so I'll get a wireless receiver it'll look for go to next level I'll get an AND gate out and we'll plug both of these into the AND gate and we'll use the AND gate to power the doorway. We'll take control of the puppet. You see that if I step in, nothing happens. But if I press the touchpad, it triggers the doorway. In the next video, I'm going to be showing a different technique for this so that instead of transitioning to a new scene, we can generate another labyrinth somewhere else within the same scene then teleport over to the new one once this one's deleted. That way we stay within one scene and as long as our labyrinth isn't too big we'll constantly be able to move to the next one without ever changing scenes. If you're interested in seeing how that works or if you enjoyed this please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.